Howdy, Possum Patty here. And you know, this afternoon, I was in the mood to get out my family notebook. This is just an altered composition book, because you might remember the other day when I came across this pilgrim picture, I said I wanted to put that in my family notebook. So it's been sitting here on the desk. So I got it out this afternoon and I was getting ready to put this picture in, but then I found a page that I hadn't finished. So I started working on this other page. I'll explain that in a minute. And well, one thing led to another, which led to another, and I'm still working on this spread over here. And I haven't even gotten to my pilgrims yet, but well, let me show you what I've done so far. So come on along. I bought this composition book on Amazon because I love the cover. Isn't it gorgeous? And this is by Latte Notebooks. Now I might cover up this little tag right here say something about family notebook and Cornell is just a style of the original composition book it has spaces for like footnotes and side notes but it doesn't matter how it's ruled because the pages are going to get covered up anyway but I did like the cover so I put the actual title of the of the book on the inside poets paupers pawns and kings is the title of my book. I should have called it Cousins. <laughs> now, these are ransom letters, which just means they're randomly cut from magazines and other sources. Sort of like what, you know, in the old movies, when somebody was kidnapped, the kidnapper would cut the letters from a newspaper to write the le ransom letter because he didn't want anybody to see his handwriting. And I have a collection of these, and it's just fun to put them together like this. On this side, I cut this out of a book. There's a crowd of people here, old-fashioned folk, looking at the title of the book. And I have a few names here in the tree from my family tree. On the next page, I have the picture of a cover of a book that I found online. I don't own the physical book, but you can read it online. And this is the Cantrill, Cantrill genealogy book by Susan Cantrill Christie. Now, this was written a while ago, and some modern-day genealogists have found a few things wrong with her research, but I still refer to it. I think most of it is pr pretty good, pretty good. And then I started making these connections, and this is about... Aaron Simon and Peter Cantrell and how during the Revolutionary War they actually were scouts for General Francis Marion and you might remember him from Walt Disney's movie The Swamp Fox. <laughs> yeah, The Swamp Fox. So it is believed that they served with Marion during the Revolutionary War. So I went ahead, so these were my, I think they were my uncles. Yeah, because here it says I'm their fifth great grand niece. So obviously they're my uncles. So then I looked up Francis Marion and I put his story here about the Revolutionary War and I found this picture and it says, and this is from that book there. It says the Cantrells would be a part of the ragtag lot behind General Marion. So here's Marion down here. And I looked him up and I found that he's connected to me. Now, I use a free genealogy site called WikiTree, WikiTree, and it is free to use. And not only can you find people who are related to you, but you can find people who are connected to you through marriages. So Francis Marion is connected to me through marriage. So every time you see like the yellow go to green, the green go to yellow, that's a marriage. So there's no direct descendant here. It is just from Francis Marion's family to this family to this family to my family. 
So my family married into a family that his family married into. So we're connected. <laughs> and this is my uncle LV. And this page is about our meteorite. Yes, we have a family meteorite. <laughs> you know what I'll do? I will link the playlist for this book below. Because if you're interested in learning a little bit more about these pages, you can go through the playlist. And this is a history of Greene County, Arkansas that my great aunt Merle wrote. And this is just a copy of the cover of the book. And then inside, I have the story of the meteorite because it's in this book. But I also use some other references, newspaper articles and things like that on how our family came into possession of this meteorite and how they lost it and how most of it is now in the... Um, Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. And then it was spring and I saw a house that was surrounded by daffodils and I remembered the poem, I wandered lonely as a cloud about the daffodils. And that was written by William Wordsworth. So I looked him up on Wikitree and we are 10th cousins seven times removed. Now removed just means generations back. So he is seven generations before me. But we do share a great, great grandmother. And this would be my 16th great grandmother and his ninth great grandmother. So I put a little genealogy chart there. I put the field of daffodils that I found. And I made this giant journaling card. And don't ask me why I made it so tall. <laughs> I put a little cloud up there, a lovely old picture, and I put the poem. And then when I put it in the pocket that I made from daffodils, it just sticks right up out of the top of the book. But I guess it's appropriate because it, it is a cloud, so it should be floating up there, I imagine. And here's a picture of William Wordsworth. Well, let me take this card out. It's going to make it easier to turn the pages. Well, this brings us to a few of the games that I'm playing with my genealogy. And the first one has to do with Kevin Bacon. Now, you may remember that Kevin Bacon was on a show called Finding Your Roots. And he discovered that his wife, Kira Sedgwick, was his ninth cousin one time removed. You might also remember that in Hollywood, the actors were playing a game called Six Degrees of Separation from Kevin Bacon. And they were all trying to connect themselves through the film industry to Kevin Bacon through six degrees or less. And, you know, maybe they worked with an actor who worked with an actor on another film who worked with Kevin Bacon. So they were all making connections from their work in Hollywood to Kevin Bacon. It was really funny for a while. Yeah. And this came from the idea that everyone in the world is connected to each other through acquaintances six degrees or less. So you might know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and by the time you get to six degrees the whole world is connected. <laughs> That's hard to believe but you know I guess somebody researched that right? Anyway so the six degrees of Kevin Bacon came from the six degrees of, of separation that any two people on earth are related through six or fewer acquaintances. Oh, so then I said, well, <laughs> let me go to Wikitree and see if I'm related to Kevin Bacon. And lo and behold, Kevin Bacon and I are ninth cousins once removed. I think that's really funny because that's the same exact separation that his wife is to him. So I put this in there as a reminder that I am connecting myself to everyone. On this other game, 
I was playing with Mr. Possum. So we'd be sitting in the living room watching a movie. He loves to watch like history and documentaries. And a character would pop up on the screen. And I would say, oh, I'm related to them. And then I would go to WikiTree and find some kind of connection to that, to that character, where they're real or maybe the actor, right? And so we were watching Rob Roy and I looked it up and I am related to Rob Roy. He is my ninth cousin, 12 times removed. Removed means back in generation. So Eleanor is his eighth great grandmother and she is my 20th great grandmother. So I put the poster from the movie Rob Roy and my genealogy sheet is going in there like a little pocket. Well, so I started researching Rob Roy and I came across this poem about Rob Roy's grave. And I said, oh, wow, look at that. And come to find out the poem was written by William Wordsworth, who is my cousin, 10 times, seven times removed. So my cousin William wrote a poem about my cousin Rob Roy. <laughs> A famous man is Robin Hood, the English ballad singer's joy, and Scotland has a thief as good, an outlaw of as daring mood. She has her brave Rob Roy. Then clear the weeds from off his grave, and let us chant a passing stave in honor of that hero brave. Heaven gave Rob Roy a dauntless heart and wondrous length and strength of arm nor craved he more to quell his foes or keep his friends from harm. So I printed this out on vellum. I said, that's got to go in there, right? And I made a pocket and I made some more research and I found the actual grave site for Rob Roy, the real Rob Roy, not Liam Neeson, <laughs> in Scotland, in Scotland. So I printed that out. This is about um, the legend of Rob Roy, how he became a legend in his own lifetime because somebody wrote a book about him before he even passed away and more books were written and then William Wordsworth wrote this poem and they named a drink after him, right? So there was a lot to do with the legend of Rob Roy. So I have the poem, I have the grave, I got the little wiki blur. And then, you know, once I start researching this stuff, I don't stop, I just keep researching. And I came across something that said, the McGregor, because it's Rob Roy McGregor, the McGregor seal went from Scotland to Iowa. I said, oh, that's interesting. I guess with a grandson or something, when he came to America, he brought the seal and it was carved in bloodstone. 
and a, a green and red stone that came from Loch Lomond, I believe it was. So it went from Loch Lomond, and an artist carved the seal in a bloodstone. Now, I don't know if this still exists or this is just a part of written history. I couldn't find a picture of it. But <laughs> after reading that, what did I do? I went over to my box of rocks, right? And I said, oh, I have a bloodstone. So a bloodstone is a very pretty green, and it's got these red inclusions, little speckles and splashes of red on the green stone. Very pretty. So now I'm thinking, oh, now I should put this in my rock journal, a picture of this and a story about Rob Roy's seal and how it was carved on the, the bloodstone. So this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I go from one thing to another, and now I want to find a connection to Liam Neeson. I think we're related by marriage, and I want to do the bloodstone because that's what they carved the seal in. And I was like, okay, well, stop with that and move on. And right now we're watching a TV series called Rain. R-E-I-G-N, about Mary, Queen of Scots. So, of course, I tell Mr. Possum, I'm related to Mary, Queen of Scots, of course, right? <laughs> so, Mary, Queen of Scots, and I are seventh cousins, 14 times removed. So, Eleanor is her sixth great-grandmother, and she is my 20th great-grandmother. So I printed this out, and I think I want to do the same thing like I did with Rob Roy and put the poster from the TV series here and just put the genealogy in the pocket. And then if I discover anything else about our relationship or any other ways I can make connections, I'll put that on another page. Oh, I found this scrapbook paper in my bin. This came from the flea market. And it was just a really pretty family tree scrapbook paper. And I stuck it in here because I have something I want to put in here that's also Scottish. But I didn't get that far. Okay. Going back. All right. I'm going to leave these two pages blank. And I'm going to come over here. we got to put Mary Queen of Scots here. But i got to print out a picture. Back to the pilgrim. I just want to put this in here, so I'm going to glue that down inside here. Why the Pilgrims in my genealogy book. I am not a direct descendant that I know about so far anyway, but I am cousins with someone who came over on the Mayflower. And this book was written about Richard Moore. And Richard Moore Sr. and I are eighth cousins 10 times removed. <laughs> when he was a little boy, he came over to the Americas on the Mayflower. Now, the name of the book is Mayflower Bastard, not because he was a bad guy. No, this is the biblical sense in that um, he was born out of wedlock. Well, his mother was married, but unfortunately not to his father. <laughs> so I want to do the same thing on this page. I might put a little bit of a background on here and make a pocket and put our genealogy in there. So Richard Moore Sr.'s seventh great-grandfather was Thomas. And my 17th great-grandfather was Thomas to Grizzly about 1367. Now I do Ancestry, but you have to pay for Ancestry. And they don't play the games. And what I like about Wikitree is that they make all these connections. They do a lot of the work for you because there's people on there who are really good at genealogy and they are always working on the family trees. Now you may remember, if you've been a Possum Pete for a little while, that in October 
Mr. Possum and I went up to Salem, Massachusetts. And that's where I got my pink possum dress. So if you haven't seen that adventure, I can link that one below. And we went to Salem, Massachusetts because that is where Richard Moore is buried in the old cemetery. They call it the old burying ground right there in Salem, Massachusetts. So we had been to Salem a couple of years ago, but we hadn't gotten into the cemetery. You actually have to make a reservation to get into the cemetery. And we hadn't done it. But this time, my sole reason for going up there was to get into the cemetery. And finding a pink possum dress was just happenstance. <laughs> so we got into the cemetery. And we took a nice walk around looking at the graves, a lot of old graves there, some big old trees too. Of course, Flat Stanley was with us. And did Flat Stanley get into trouble? Yes, he did, as always. He's very mischievous, that Flat Stanley. So we walked all around through the cemetery looking at the headstones and the names. And we finally came to the spot where Richard Moore was buried. And they have like a special protective stone around the original gravestone, maybe because it's so old and it was falling apart. And he's an historical figure and they wanted to preserve that. So I paid my respects. Cousin Richard there took some pictures of his gravestone and then we went out of the graveyard and around to a different section and that is where there is a memorial to the witches that were hung in Salem you know after the witch trials now they have a place where you walk through and there's a memorial stone for each one of the witches that were hung after the Salem witch trials. The graves are not there because I don't believe they buried witches on hollowed ground, but they have a memorial stone and people leave flowers and notes and stones and coins. People who are related especially will leave little notes. Yeah, so I took a picture of each stone because I was like, well, now I have to look up all those people and see if I am related to any of them. I'm going to glue a piece of scrapbook paper for the background on this page and make the pocket from the cover of the book. Now back here, I did sew the vellum to the background paper and then put the background paper in. But I'm doing it a little bit differently on this page. So I'm gonna put some glue stick in the middle and a little bit of tacky glue around the edge because it is cardstock. Now nothing in this notebook is going to be in any kind of an order whatsoever. It is just going to be a collection of stories as I find them and make connections to other things and other people. And this is just for fun. I think I'm going to make a pocket on this page and cover up some of this stuff on the bottom here. And then by putting some of this paper on this side, It'll kind of bring these two pages together. But first, I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac to glue this pocket down. Do I want a thumb hole? Pockets and flips and things like that, I like to use the Fabri-Tac. A little bit of a stronger hold. I picked the blue and the gold because of the blue that's in the picture of the Mayflower there. 
Give that a second to dry while I cut down a pocket for this side. So I will put the genealogy to Richard Moore in the pocket made by the copy of the cover of the book. And now I have the pocket over here. And what I'm going to do for this side is, oh, I'm going to print out some pictures of the grave and write a little story and put it in this pocket. And while I was printing out the picture for Rain, Mary Queen of Scots, Catherine de' Medici, and Queen Elizabeth, I covered these two sides with this gold paper. And I'm just going to make another pocket because I have another genealogy paper I want to put in there. Do I want a white strip? You know what? I don't think I do. I think I'm going to take it right down to the brown. So the brown is against the gold. Now, if you join the wiki tree, they send out a newsletter and periodically they have different themes. Like for Valentine's Day, they will connect you to famous lovers. And who were the famous lovers at the Super Bowl? Hmm, will that go in my journal? Stay tuned for that one. And they might have like, you know, French explorers or Spanish nobles or you know, maybe someone famous passed away and they find out if you're related to that person somehow. So it is a lot of fun. So this is just the poster from the TV series and I'm going to make another pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Maybe I'll make a pocket this way just for a change, right? Just for a change. I don't like that blue there. Hmm. I want to cover that up with gold. Ah, yes, that looks better. And the genealogy will go into the pocket. Now, this is the TV show, so I left this page to put something about the real Mary Queen of Scots on this side. I am loving all this gold for Mary, Queen of Scots. And I will put something about the real Mary, Queen of Scots on this page. And I've got my Rob Roy and the connection to my other cousin, William Wordsworth. But you know what? I think I want to put the portrait of the real Rob Roy in the journal. So I might go back and do it on that page. And then I have my Richard Moore. And this side's done, and I'm going to make a journaling card for that side. And then for this big tree, I want to put some information about my mother's Scottish clan, the Mecca Beans. <laughs> That's going to go over here for Flowers of the Forest. That'll be in the next video I do for this notebook. Well, that was a bit of a play, and I got a few things started, and I'm really happy about that. So... If you're working on any family stories or genealogies or notebooks, something like that, and you'd like to share your story, just go ahead and put it in the comments below. I'd love to read it. And I want to thank everyone for coming along today. And happy junk journaling. Bye-bye.